several of our folks are traveling, and uh, pray for them. There's lots of things going on. Uh, we may never see them again. You know, they might be in quarantine for two years. No, I don't think so. Uh, one of them, uh, Linda and Adrian, have gone to Bali. So I, I don't know what's going on there, but uh, anyway. And uh, then uh, Brad, is, is he in Melbourne? Yeah. yeah. A lot of sickness in Melbourne. You've got to watch out for Melbourne. No. I will say this. <clears throat> we won't be offended if you don't shake our hand, all right? If you just want to wave or touch elbows. Try not to kick each other. I don't think that's a good idea. I uh, heard some places they touch feet. That could be dangerous, you know, especially when you're sitting down. Uh, anyway, strange times, isn't it? My wife was mentioning the verse where the Bible talks about men's hearts failing them for fear. Uh, I think the world is, is afraid. And, you know, for a person without Christ, all they've got is this world. And uh, so you know, it is a fearful thing to think about, about death. But as Christians, uh, we have a hope. We have the, the blessed hope of the Lord Jesus Christ. This morning, I, I want to talk to you about something a, l a little bit different. Well, not that different. I want to talk to you about your emotions. Emotions. Now, we read there in, in Colossians, and there's a lot there that has to do with um, our body and our spirit, how, how we relate those things. And, uh, you know, God has given us emotions. Jesus has, has emotions. God has emotions. Uh, but you'll find this. Emotions make good servants. They don't make good masters. You don't want to be ruled by your emotions. Uh, there's two particularly that can dominate people's lives, fear and anger. Now, there's others. There's, there's plenty more. Uh, Jesus asked his disciples, Why are you fearful, O ye of little faith? Uh, Ecclesiastes says, Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry, for anger resteth in the bosom of fools. Now, we might think we're really justified in our anger. God says, uh, That's, that's not, not the way you want to go. God recommends us to be slow to anger, for instance. In uh, Proverbs 16, He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. He that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city. And God can say that because that's how he is. God is slow to anger. And when God's judgment falls, it, it's not boom. It's 100 years, 200 years, 300 years. You know, God's long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish. You know, when you read in the Bible about God's judgment falling, man, of course it falls. It, it, it really hits. But he's been wooing. He's been calling. He's been, uh, you know, loving and long-suffering. God is slow to anger, it says in Psalm 145. He is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. Uh, so God tells us uh, not to be afraid. God tells us uh, n not to be angry. Uh, one of my favorite verses, uh, Jesus came upon his disciples as they were fishing, and he comes on them walking on the water. So you can imagine that would be a bit scary. And uh, they're I don't know how you'd say it. They were, they were packing it. I mean, they, they'd, they thought they'd seen a ghost. And he says to them, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. I love those words. Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. Listen, you can, you can remember those words every day. <laughs> uh, the Lord will help you as, as you face life. You know, we, uh, we hear what God says about this, and yet oftentimes we are mastered by our emotions. You know, we let our emotions decide what we're going to do, and even sometimes what we believe. Now, some people are known as fearful people. Some are known as angry people. Listen, that should not be uh, for us as Christians. Uh, the, it should not be a, an emotion that we're, we're known by. Now, emotions are essential. Uh, God gives us emotions. Can you imagine a world uh, without joy? You know, we, we like some emotions. <laughs> uh, we could say, well, I'd like a world without anxiety, but, you know, we, there's all kinds of different emotions that, that we have. Someone has defined emotions as a spontaneous response to your values and beliefs that have either been affirmed or challenged. Now, you won't find that in your dictionary, but uh, a spontaneous response to your values and beliefs that have either been affirmed or challenged. Now, that's probably a pretty good definition. Let, let me give you an example in Matthew chapter 21. Three different responses to the exact same situation. And it's because of their, their values and beliefs as they face the situation. There's actually two situations, but we only see their, 
the three responses to the one. Uh, it's when Jesus comes to the temple and casts people out. I, I find it interesting that the Lord doesn't tell us his emotions there. Uh, you know, there's other times when God tells us, you know, Jesus was grieved or he was angry. It doesn't really say here. You assume he was angry, but uh, it, it doesn't say, at least, uh, at least not in Matthew. I don't think I've looked him up every gospel, but um, in, in Matthew 21, verse 12, he, he casts them out. And he says, my house shall be called the house of prayer. You've made it a den of thieves. Then in verse 14, and the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. Okay, here's the situation. And when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were sore displeased. So here you have three different responses to the same thing. Now here's people that are lame and blind. Now Jesus, uh, it, the Bible doesn't say this, but he's, he's showing them sympathy. He's showing compassion. They come to him, he heals them. Sounds good to me. If I was lame and blind, that's the response I'd want. The, the children see it. Wow, they say, what a wonderful thing. And they're shouting, Hosanna, you know. The scribes and Pharisees see it, and they say to him in verse 16, hearest thou what these say? Don't you know they, they shouldn't be so happy about this? They're, they're giving you praise. <laughs> they had a completely different response. Jesus had one response. The children had a response. The scribes and Pharisees had a response. Same situation. Now, you can have that happen. But one that came to my mind is, is a footy game. Somebody wins, somebody loses. Same situation. <laughs> Well, I guess maybe it's not exactly. Uh, we have different responses based on our values. And the problem is, oftentimes our values are wrong. And maybe I'm the only one like that. You know, I'll just preach to myself this morning. But uh, you know, we're often glad about things we shouldn't be glad about. Sometimes we're mad about things that we shouldn't be mad about. Sometimes we're sad about things because we have wrong, wrong values. You determine by your values and beliefs how you respond. And by the way, that's, that's a pretty good way to see what your values and beliefs are. See how you respond to things. And uh, sometimes it'll bring you up short and you'll think, Lord, Lord, help me. Lord, change me. Uh, give me eternal values. You know, the Bible does say that we can be angry and, and not sin. Uh, just anger in itself is, is not a sin. But it's not very often that we actually do that. <laughs> you know, we, we like that idea. Uh, but usually we respond a, a little bit more childishly than we should. In fact, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, uh, the Lord says, uh, he, Paul is talking to the church at Corinth. He, he says, I could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. And I think that's the difference we're looking at here today. We need to have a spiritual response when our emotions are touched. We need to... Ha be allowing the Lord to change us, making us like Jesus, so that, you know, sometimes we'll have an initial carnal response, but where we can reconsider, no, the Lord would have me to be different than this. And he was saying to them, I can't speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal. It means fleshly, even as unto babes in Christ. And that's, that's the division I want us to, to see here uh, this morning. You know, as Christians... We're going to have strong emotions, and we should. There's things we should, we should be strongly moved by. Uh, Jesus had strong emotions. Read the Gospels lately? Uh, Jesus wept at the death of his friend. Uh, Jesus was angry at the desecration of, of the temple. On the cross, he cried out, My God, you know, I don't think he did that in a calm voice. Why hast thou forsaken me? Uh, the Pharisees, at one point, were against Jesus healing a man with a withered hand. And, you know, Jesus knows what we're thinking. And the Bible says, he looked round about them, on them with anger, being grieved for the hardness of their heart. Jesus had strong emotions. Spiritual Christians can have strong emotions. Uh, emotions are not sin. But many times, we, we turn them to sin because we have wrong values and, and wrong beliefs. Uh, Jesus calls us to have his joy. Not all of his emotions are negative ones. Uh, God has great joy, and, and he, he calls us in John 17. He says, I, I, I speak in the world that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. But you know, 
A, a spiritual Christian, like Jesus, is not going to be a slave to their emotions. We're not going to be ruled by our emotions. We're going to be ruled by the Lord. And this is one of the things God is talking about when he says, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. You know, Paul talks about going through all the different situations. I can do it through Christ's strength. Uh, if you look back there in, in Colossians where, where we read this morning, Colossians chapter 3, it's not exactly the same word, but it's, it's pretty much the same. In Colossians 3 verse 2, set your affection on things above. What we value, uh, what we believe, uh, we need to be guided by eternal things, heavenly things. In, in uh, Corinthians, he talks about the things that we see, are they're just temporary. But the things we don't see, those, those are the eternal. And, and yet so often we're, we're more moved by the temporary than we are by the eternal. You know, some little thing happens and, oh, boy, we go up and turn left, you know. Uh, but something eternal happens and we just, we just kind of ignore it. Uh, he says we're to set our affection on things above. And uh, like we read in, in verse 3, ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. God wants us to put sin to death. You know, live as, as dead to the world. In, uh, in verse 5, he, he uses the same expression, mortify therefore your members. In uh, verse 8, he says, now, now ye also put off all these. And he lists a whole, whole bunch of things there. Many of them have to do with our, our emotions, anger, wrath, malice, and so on. Now, put off. In verse 10, he says, put on the new man. If you're saved, God says you've been born again. You've been made new. Put on that new man. Get out of the habit of that old dead man that you left behind. You know, Quit that and, and start living like the person you are in Christ. Put on the new man. In verse 12, put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, and then he lists bowels of mercy, kindness. Uh, has a lot to do with our emotions, doesn't it? And then in, in verse 14, above all these things, put on charity. And in verse 15, let the peace of God rule. And then he just adds, and be thankful. <laughs> uh, we need to have a, th a thankful attitude. You know, let God's peace rule in your heart, not your emotions. You know, when, when things are stressful, just stop and remember. It, it's not your emotions that are in charge. It's not your emotions that need to make this decision. It's not anger. It's not fear that needs to make the decision. It's the Lord. Trust the Lord. Man, as you go through the Bible, you'll see people who live by faith. Aren't you glad God records that? You know, just normal people like us who, who face amazing, amazingly difficult things, and they say, well, I guess I'll just trust the Lord. I've been taken captive and taken off to this country, and you know, I've got this army facing me, or I've got... You know, death staring me in the face. Or Thinking about Abraham and his son Isaac. Can you imagine? Here, here he'd prayed for a son. God had promised him a son. And years and years go by and he doesn't have a son. Finally he has a son in his old age. Impossible. And then God says, Abraham, take that son and offer him for a sacrifice. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? The thing you've, in one sense, physically lived for. And now God says... Abraham, that's what I want. That's faith, folks. He couldn't go by his emotions. He had to go by faith. And he believed, the Bible tells us, that if, if he offered that child as a sacrifice to God, God had promised him that son, God would raise him from the dead. Man, that's faith. And, you know, you apply the things that we're facing, and that's, they're nothing compared to that. You know, will I get the job? Will, I, will my health fail? Or, you know, put that into context there. We need to be people who are not ruled by our emotions, but who are ruled by the peace of God. Listen, we need to be willing for God to be God, for Jesus to be Lord. And when there's things that God has said, this is the way it needs to be, we need to say, well, Lord, I don't understand it, but I believe it. I'll just trust you. Now, this is not original with, with me this, this morning, but I want to give you some things that I think will help you uh, with your emotions. You know, just right at the, at the coal face of life, uh, when, uh, when emotions hit that you're, you're struggling with, 
Um, someone has taken the, the letters of the word action, A-C-T-I-O-N, six things that, that you can do that will help you uh, when emotions are trying to rule you rather than the peace of God. Uh, the first is A, acknowledge the emotion. You'll never deal with your emotions if you won't acknowledge them. Have you ever heard someone shout, I am not angry! Quit telling me I'm angry! <laughs> we have, haven't we? We've probably done it ourselves, or thought it. Um, Jesus, in Matthew 26, said, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Yeah, we need to acknowledge when emotions come. Don't, don't ignore them or, or deny them. Acknowledge the emotion. Secondly, C, consider the source. Now, what we're talking about here is when we have a, an emotion that's wrong, when we're using it wrongly, looking at, at ourself and the, the source that God holds me responsible for. Uh, in Psalms, he says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. See if there be any wicked way in, in me. Uh, emotions always come from within us. And remember our definition, emotions are spontaneous responses to your values and beliefs that have either been affirmed or challenged. The common way to deal with an emotion is to blame someone or something else. It starts when, why did you hit your brother? He hit me first. Uh, I'll say this to parents, why is not a good question. Uh, what is, is the question. What did you do? I hit my brother. Is that right? No. <laughs> uh, the why doesn't make any difference. Uh, we need to consider the source, and we need to get past excusing our emotions. You know, a lot of times we'll, we'll blame somebody. He treated me bad. No one has the right to treat me like that. And we blame our wrong emotional response on what someone has done. Uh, we even go so far as to say, well, I, I'm just really stressed and tired right now. I wouldn't normally say that. Uh, listen, stress and tiredness is a little bit like drugs and alcohol. It brings out what's really in you. <laughs> and we don't always like to see that. Uh, consider the source. Now, physical things will affect our emotions. I mean, it can even be as basic. We, we know of a pastor's wife who, who her, her, her personality changed. And they found out she had a brain tumor. You know, she'd been very pleasant, and then and all of a sudden she wasn't. And, and they found out there was a physical reason. There, there can be. Uh, that can happen. But that's not the norm. Uh, normally, it's, it's just in us. It's a value or belief being challenged or affirmed. Many times, we feel like our rights are, are being denied. They're not listening to me. They're not treating me the way I should. Uh, many times, we're not living by faith. We're, we're angry or we're, or we're fearful. Uh, many times, we're valuing the temporal rather than the eternal. We need to see, and it's at this point you might need some help because God gives us a clue here. He says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Uh, sometimes you'll fool yourself. And sometimes it's good to talk to a, a godly Christian person who knows you and uh, get them to help you see uh, what's going on. Not, not always. Uh, but whether or not you identify the source, you need to take the, second, the third step. First, acknowledge the emotion, consider the source. Thirdly, thank God that he'll help you master that emotion. Understand that God has a remedy. Thank God. You know, you may not be to the point yet where you understand what's going on and why it's going on, uh, but the Bible says, for instance, in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that you may be able to bear it. Uh, in, in the Psalms, there's many times, the Psalms are very present tense, and, and they talk about uh, things that are, are here and now. Psalm 42, uh, verse 5, for instance, he says, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. See, he's... He's acknowledging his emotion. He's considering the source. Why art thou disquieted within me? And he's thanking God that, that he'll help. Psalm 42, verse 8, Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime. 
and in the night his song shall be with me and my prayer unto the God of my life. God is always at work in our lives, folks. God never takes a break. He's never late. He's never early. God is always there. That's why God can say, 1 Thessalonians 5.18, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Now, he doesn't say for everything. If there's sin around, listen, we don't thank God for sin. If there's disasters, and we don't necessarily thank God for disasters, but in them, we thank the Lord. We have hope. In everything, give thanks. In Romans 8, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Listen, if we are having a, a bad emotional response, it's because we're not following that belief that God says, this has eternal value. There's something that's going on here that God can, can, uh, can use. And, and listen, these, these are not things I'm just teaching to you. Uh, a lot of what I've been preaching lately has been mainly to me. Uh, you know, there's, there's things we, we go through and things we think, well, Lord, what's going on here? We asked for this and you've given us just the opposite. Well, God knows more than I do. I've, I've, you know, I learned that a while back. <laughs> God knows a lot more than I do. God knows everything. And God knows what's right. And God is good. God's always good. Paul and Silas, you know, they're out doing the, the work of God. And, uh, of course, they end up in prison, as, as you do, you know. And uh, the Bible says, at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. <laughs> that, that was their testimony, that they had their, their emotions were under God's control. They weren't down in the dumps just because they were in prison. Uh, they were happy to, to serve the Lord. Paul and Silas could, could praise the Lord. Now, whether you understand the situation or not, we can thank the Lord. God asks us for faith. We usually ask for sight. <laughs> we say, Lord, show me. God says, trust me. And remember that God is always there and he's always working. He, one of his names is, he's the great I am. He, he's present tense. God is the great I am. In Psalm 46, he says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. I don't care who you are. Sometime you're going to go through trouble. And trouble is right now. You know, sometimes you look back on it, you think, oh, I see what God was doing, you know, 10 years later or, you know, whatever. Uh, and sometimes you even laugh about it. Or, but when you're going through trouble, uh, when you're, especially when you're having a hard time with your response to the trouble, man, you need, that's when you need to remember he's a present, very present help in time of trouble. So we've seen acknowledge the emotion, consider the source. We're, we're looking within, seeing, well, what's going on here? Thank God that he'll help. The I, then, is identify the proper biblical response. Identify, well, what does God want me to do? Now, usually this is after you've already practiced your own sinful reaction. <laughs> you know, you've had your sinful reaction. Oh, okay, well, what does the Lord want me to do now? And understand, we do choose. We like to say we had no choice sometimes when we have a reaction. But we've spent years uh, creating the basis for our, our reactions. And sometimes it'll even surprise you what comes out of your heart. But don't blame bad behavior on bad feelings or on others. Uh, everybody has days when they feel bad. And, and listen, a cup of coffee is not enough to make it right. <laughs> uh, for some, you know, it's drugs. Uh, others are, are not to blame. People can be really mean and people can do terrible things, but we're responsible for our responses. Have you ever experienced interrupted anger? Probably most of you have. You're having a big fight, you know, you're really getting after each other, and the doorbell rings. Oh, hello, Pastor. How are you? <laughs> you know, all of a sudden, we can control it. Why? Because someone interrupted. Well, listen, the Lord is there. There's never a time when the Lord's not there. I'm so embarrassed to think about some of the things I've done in my past and just treated God like he's nothing. My emotions were so important. Folks, we, we need to see, well, what does God want me to do? What is God doing in my life? See how God says you should respond. And then that leads to the next point. Obey the leading of the Spirit. God will use his word to help you 
do what's right. And, and like I said, sometimes you've already done the wrong thing. Sometimes you'll need to, to say, listen, I, I was wrong. I'm sorry. Sometimes you might have to pay back the, the window you broke or you know, whatever it is. Uh, obey the leading of the Spirit. See how God says you should respond and obey. Uh, in uh, one of the series we did, we learned Ephesians 4, 31 and 32. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake you. So we can see from that verse, listen, if there's bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor, clamor's yelling, <laughs> evil speaking, malice, if that's involved, that's not what God's Holy Spirit and God's Word tells us to do. And so we need to quit doing that. Be kind, tenderhearted, forgiving. Be like Jesus. Uh, identify the proper biblical response and then obey the Lord. When it comes to fear, God says, God hath not given us the spirit of fear. Listen, if you're living in fear, uh, that's not right. I mean, we're supposed to fear God and we're supposed to have a normal fear of, you know, don't jump off a cliff and, and think it'll be okay uh, kind of thing. Use common sense. And, and that comes under the category, he's not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. <laughs> All right? Uh, have, have a sound mind. We, we don't live in la-la land as Christians. Uh, we live in the real world. Uh, Jesus, when he walked on the beach, left, left footprints in the sand, folks. Uh, you know, it, he, he sweat and he was tired and, you know, all those things. Uh, we live in a real world, and we need to obey the, the leading of the Spirit. If we're living with the spirit of fear, God says, that's not the right way. Trust me. If we're living in, in anger or bitterness, I see so much bitterness around anymore. And, and people sometimes think it's, it's okay. They've wronged me, so... Here's the right response. I'll just cut them off and be bitter. Does God's word mean nothing to us? Obey the leading of the, of the Spirit. And folks, this is a conscious act of the will. You won't always feel like doing this. You won't always feel like being kind to that person who's been mean to you. You won't always feel like being brave when you feel like being afraid. Don't live your life by fear or anger. Don't live your life... Uh, by your feelings. Colossians 3, where we started, talked about hiding yourself. Ye are hid with Christ in God. Man, that's double protection. Triple protection when you throw the Holy Spirit in. Uh, you know, we, we have what we need to live the Christian life. We often excuse our actions, but we don't often excuse other people's. And we blame them for our wrong responses. Obey the leading of the Spirit. So identify the proper biblical response, and then do it. Obey. And then end of action is nurture the fruit of the Spirit. Spend time in your life building on what God has, has taught you. Help those reactions to grow. You've made a habit of wrong reactions. You've nurtured them. Man, you've nurtured that anger. You, you've gloried in that bitterness. You've gloried in that lust or, you know, whatever it is. Well, quit doing that and start nurturing the fruit of the Spirit. As soon as that comes up, say, no. Nope. Pull that out, throw it away, and nurture the, the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, God can, can do wonderful things in our life if we'll just let him. God's word works. Uh, I'm trying to think of, of the word he uses. I think it's in, uh, in Thessalonians. Let me, let me find it here. Effectually. The word of God which effectually worketh also in you that believe. God's word will work. You know, sometimes you buy things at the shop you don't know. Will this work? <laughs> they always promise it will. Well, God's word will work. If you'll apply it, it will work. Obey the leading of the Spirit. Nurture the fruit of the Spirit. And don't spend a lot of time condemning yourself. You know, the world will teach you that you, that you need to do penance. God doesn't say that. If we confess our sin, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Now, when we get saved, all of our sins are forgiven. In Romans, he says, there's therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Uh, we, don't, we don't have to live there. Don't, don't spend a lot of time down in the dumps. Confess it and move on. I, I was hearing somebody preaching the other day, and, he, and I was pleased to hear him say, listen, if you're away from the Lord, it just takes one step back. You just get things right and, and get back in step with the Lord. Uh, we don't have to spend years getting it right. You know, the world will tell you that. Oh, this is going to take years to sort out. Don't you believe it? 
God has a cure, and he, and he has it now. Nurture the fruit of the Spirit. Encourage yourself when you do right. Let the Lord encourage you. And one of the things that has always stuck out in my mind is uh, David, when he was in such trouble, uh, they came back from a battle, and, and the enemy had taken all the women and children. And the men were so upset, they were ready to kill him. And the Bible says, David encouraged his heart in the Lord. David went to God. Folks, there's encouragement in the Lord. We don't have to be ruled by our emotions. We don't have to be ruled by our soul. We can be ruled by the Spirit of God. Encourage yourself and do right. Galatians 6, 9 says, Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Keep doing what's right. Nurture what, what God has, has put in you. The Bible talks about the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, this is something we need to be encouraging ourselves in every day. Uh, God's Holy Spirit wants to be building in you love, joy, peace, long-suffering, <laughs> gentleness, meekness, patience. You know, all of those things come from the Lord. And really, you stop and think about it. That that's where our emotions are, aren't they? We need God's Holy Spirit. But you know, our goal is not to change our feelings. That's, that's not, feelings are not the reason. They're not the goal. Our goal is to please God. Whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. Uh, with Christ, you can follow that course of action. If you've read Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. Listen, the Lord can lead you in the paths of righteousness by the, by the still streams of peace and so on. God can help you. But without Christ, you're not going to be able to do it. Isaiah put it this way. He said, all we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. And see, that's the problem we face in life. Every one of us are trying to go our own way, and, and we're running into each other because of it. And we're saying, get out of this. This is my way. <laughs> we need to be going God's way. If you're not going to follow the Lord, you're not going to be able to have the peace that you want. Listen, God offers people exactly what they want. They won't admit it many times. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness. I mean, that's what people want. And they try to get it in all the wrong ways. The way to do it is to turn loose of your, your own way and to trust the Lord Jesus Christ. Sin is going our own way, pleasing ourselves. The Bible says our sin has been laid on Jesus. Uh, those going our own ways are what put Jesus on the cross. Romans 5, 6 says, When we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. And he says, all of sin, that, that's ungodly is us. Romans 5, 8, God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 6, 23 says, The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. What a blessing uh, that we can have our sins forgiven, that God will take up residence within us, uh, His Holy Spirit helping us and moving us uh, to do right, showing us when we're, when we're doing wrong, helping us. Uh, our sin has been laid on Jesus Christ. Let me encourage you this morning. Uh, we all have emotions. Uh, we all have difficulties we face and blessings that we receive. And, you know, life is... Is pretty much the same, no matter who you are, where you live, or how old you are. But the difference between a life that's worthwhile and a life that's going to be wasted is what will you do with Jesus? What will you do with Jesus? Now, he's the one who gave you those emotions. They mirror him. He's the one who gives life. He's the one who, who decides what's right and wrong. Now, yield yourself to him. Uh, here's a good course of action, but the key is you need to have your life hid with Christ in God. You need to trust the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, like we've been seeing in, in Acts, uh, you need to have repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible says today's the day. If you don't know Christ as your Savior, you can know Him today. You can come. Uh, you can trust Him uh, by faith. Let's go to Him in prayer this morning. Heads bowed and in an attitude of prayer. Maybe the Lord is speaking to your heart. Maybe you've never trusted Christ as your Savior. Maybe you need to be born again today. Maybe you're a Christian and going through some, uh, some difficult times, struggles within. Uh, God says He can help you. He is helping you.
Father, thank you so much for your word. Lord, help us to understand that we don't have to live by our feelings. Lord, that we can live by faith. Father, I pray if there are those here this morning that are not saved, that your Holy Spirit would draw them to yourself. Help them to see their sin and to repent and to believe. Lord, I, I pray for Christians. Help us to live for you. Lord, help us to love each other and to forgive and be kind. Lord, help us to have a heart for the lost and, and not to be insulted by their, uh, their condemnation of, of, our, of our Christ. Father, help us. Pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.